You know, in looking at the one sample t-test, um, we use a one sample t-test procedure when we want to determine whether a sample comes from a population with a specific mean. Uh, another application is to use a one sample t-test procedure um, to test whether the mean of a single variable differs from a specific constant. But in essence, in, in both tests, we're, we're taking the sample mean and we're comparing it against a fixed value. The population mean may or may not be known. Um, and you know, in statistics, we're, we're quite aware of that. Um, if the population mean is not known, then we consider the population mean to be hypothesized. Um, the evaluation of analysis looks to see if the mean difference of the confidence interval that is from our sample, includes the value of zero. So we're actually looking at our specific constant or the mean of the population, and we're going to look at the difference between the confidence interval and that to see whether or not it includes zero, and we'll see that in um, our example here. All right, so there's a couple of assumptions that go along with uh, the one sample t-test, just like with any other statistical test. The dependent variable should be measured on a continuous scale. That's important. The data are independent. They're not correlated or, or related to each other. There are no significant outliers. And I'll, we'll show you how to do that in SPSS, at least one method of doing so. And the dependent variable should be approximately normally distributed, or referred to um, a Gaussian distribution. The essentials of the one sample t-test is the test is known as the one sample t-test. It's pretty much known as that. There's, I couldn't really find any other names for it. The goal is to compare whether the mean of a single variable differs from a specific constant or population mean. An example of this, a, research, a researcher may want to test whether the average IQ score for a group of students differs from 100. So we've got um, our sample is a group of students, and then our specific value is the IQ score of 100. The important assumption is that, or an additional assumption is that the data set sample is from the Gaussian distribution. When we look at effect size, and there's always an effect size with all statistical tests, the difference between, the effect size is the difference between the sample mean and the specified constant. The confidence interval, we want to ensure that, does the, the question is, does the confidence interval of the sample mean include the specified constant, or does the mean difference confidence interval include the value of zero? And we'll go and look at that uh, in our examples. For our research questions and our hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis is the sample is not from the same population as the specified constant. The alternative hypothesis is the sample is from the same population as the specified constant. The question that the p-value answers, and I know that we're all fairly familiar with p-values, is if the sample is from the population of interest or the sample mean includes the specified constant, what is the chance of observing such a large difference by chance alone in an experiment of this size? And this is pretty consistent with all p-value. Um, the question the p-value answers is really what is the uh, chance of a false positive or a type 1 error? So when we look at a Gaussian distribution, also known as a, a normal or bell-shaped curve, we actually see that um, this is also known as a parametric curve, that we actually have the, the shape of the bell with the mean in the center. And I know this is a little bit confusing slide to look at, but if you look down the first column on the left, you'll see that list of standard deviations. We go across the x-axis. We go down to z-scores and t-scores. But this is, in essence, how the sample data will actually be distributed. So this is our, our Gaussian distribution. This is um, quite a bit different than a non-parametric distribution, which may look, say, like a ski slope, where it's high on the left and, or, and low on the right, or maybe inverted, where it's, um, instead of being a nice you know, curve this way, it may actually be U-shaped or, say, W-shaped. Those would be uh, non-parametric distributions or, or non-Gaussian distributions. But for the one sample t-test, we want the sample data to form this nice bell-shaped curve.